the Coach Rob Podcast. Answering questions and eliminating frustrations about health, wellness, and performance since 1987. Welcome to the Coach Rob Performance Podcast. This is episode number two. Coach Rob Beams, how are we doing? Hey, good afternoon, brother. It's always a pleasure. Can you believe that we're on our fourth show together already? I know. It's crazy. Uh, it's the Time is flying. We're having a lot of fun. We've got a lot of, uh, we've, we've already hit on a lot of really cool topics and subjects. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, setting up the optimum training schedule uh, to try to avoid adrenal fatigue. So we're going to be talking about adrenal fatigue today. Um, this is a big one. Uh, I think that a lot of people may not be fully aware of exactly what it is. So we're going to explain that today. Um, yeah, this is the fourth one. The, the last three, we, we talked about some cool things. We talked about uh, weight loss, right? Right after the first year, that's like everybody's goal is, hey, I got to lose some weight. That's everybody's New Year's resolution, right? Lose some weight. Right. So we talked about how to do that and how to lower your body fat properly. Uh, in episode two, we talked about how to improve sleep quality. Um, sleep is obviously uh, a key performance thing that you need, right? To, right. to make the, 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 I call it the, uh, you know, it's the circle, right? It's the circle has to be complete. So that completes the circle. And then our last performance podcast, we had James Jetmar on. He's a, he's a vet racer, a motocross racer. And we talked to being, uh, talked about being fast and fit at 40 years old. So uh, we talked about, um, you know, age is just the number it's, it, it doesn't Amen. represent any, anything other than that. Right. That's exactly uh, right. But if you're a new listener, I just, we just wanted to break this down for you guys. Uh, you know, we do, we do two podcasts a month. We do the fitness podcast at the first of the month, the middle of the month, we do our performance podcast and they kind of all lead in together. So coach Rob, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Um, if you're new to us, thank you so much for taking some time out. Uh, we hope that we can kind of shed some light on some concepts that uh, tends to lead to a lot of frustrations. And as Dan alluded to here, we're this is our second performance podcast of the month and, or in this series here. And we just want to make sure that people understand that there's this ebb and flow that if you are really serious about athletic performance, and you recognize that your athletic performance will never get off the ground without a foundation of health and wellness. That's why like Dan said, that's why we want to make sure that you guys understand how they cross germinate one another. We're going to talk, think about, and I'll go right into a, a perfect illustration of it. Most people don't realize that if you're putting on a lot of body fat, particularly around your belly, that is a clear sign of cortisol. And we're going to talk about what cortisol is, ways that you can identify it. If you're new, the most important thing that we want you to recognize at the beginning of this podcast is that we will not only help you understand what it is, but we'll also provide you a solution to help offset it or even better, never allow it to become an issue. It just depends on where you're at in the spectrum of life, athletics, uh, excuse me, your athletic age, how many years have you been competing, what's going on in your family life, how old you are personally, what your athletic background is, but take a deep breath. Uh, what we don't want is anybody to be overwhelmed what you will notice is that we will cross germinate concepts. And what I mean by that is today's conversation is about building off of fit and fast at 40 and beyond. And we all know that we can do this. Now, if you're younger than 40, the principles still apply. You have age and time on your side. But for those of us that have taken on more and more responsibilities with families and professional, how do we make sure that the athletic desires that we have are literally healthy. There's a point where athleticism could be, become counterproductive and can actually prematurely age us. Tonight, we're, we're gonna be looking at adrenal fatigue. And unfortunately, if you've ever had your blood work drawn and they say, hey, you've got the EBV, the Epstein-Barr virus, it will be identifiable in your blood. The bad news is you can never get it out of your system. And I do wanna clarify really early here in the podcast, you and I have talked off the record. We will do a future show on the difference between adrenal fatigue, Epstein-Barr, Addison's disease, but I feel like we need to get our listeners up to speed on some of the things that lead into it. And as we said here just a few minutes ago, I would rather our listeners know what they can do to avoid it if they are 
a little bit older and they we're going to walk through some of the symptoms that they can identify everyday life as well as athletically we merge those two together you'll have to, you'll be able to identify do you have it if you do what can you do immediately to start to turn the situation around because dan one of the things i get asked all the time is well i've been diagnosed with epstein barr and i'm extremely tired not very motivated how long is it going to take for me to get out of it and i want the listeners to think about it if you had a shovel and you've been digging a hole called fatigue, you and I have no idea how deep that hole's been dug. I can't tell you it's going to take one week, one month, one year, one decade. I really, I would be completely misleading you if I said, oh, here's the magical formula. You'll get out of this in X amount of time. But what we will show you tonight is how do you identify the depth of your fatigue? And we'll, we'll show how you can reverse this. And I will say it doesn't make me very popular because uh, unfortunately, it's so simple that people have a tendency to think that because it's so simple, it doesn't work. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation today. Yeah. So some of the things that we talked about in the first three podcasts was basically, you know, building muscle and burning body fat. And there's really five, you know, five bullet points to that. And one is strength work. You know, you want to make sure that you're 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 lifting the, the appropriate amount of weight um, and doing, you know, the things to to make yourself strong. Aerobic cardio, obviously, you know, for your endurance, uh, your heart health, things like that. Uh, reducing stress. We talked about, you know, the stress is not just stress at home, stress at work. Oh my God, you know, how am I going to pay for groceries this month? It's, it, there's a lot of different things, you know, with, with stress related. Uh, sleeping eight hours consistently. Uh, we talked about how important that is and, and uh, kind of going through some of those sleep cycles and things like that. That's Probably one thing that not all of us get is a good night's sleep. Um, and then we talked about grazing every two hours and what the uh, benefits was to, to keep grazing throughout the day versus these large meals all at one time and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I want to get into it, Coach Rob. What is the adrenal system? I want to back you up just for ju just a brief moment. Hopefully this doesn't offend you. If you look at those five things that you just mentioned right there, the strength work, the cardio, the reducing the stress, sleeping eight hours and grazing, that's why I was alluding to, I get more pushback on these subjects than anything else because when we look at, let's go backwards here just for a brief moment. When we say graze every couple hours, you've got people out there that are telling our listeners not to eat fruits and vegetables because it has sugar in it, completely walking around the fact that it's high in vitamins and minerals. Um, they're catalysts for energy. They play a significant role in your overall health. When you look at uh, cardio, we want to make sure it's predominantly aerobic. When you look at the idea that you've got to sleep eight hours, it's balancing, as you called it, you know, those four quadrants of life, personal, professional, financial, and athletic. That's your totter of balance. Because when you look at everything that I've talked about and people have, you know, they've been, they've come at me pretty aggressively and I'm okay with that. Like I said, I'm here to try to create something new. I'm just trying to help decipher the misinformation that's floating around out there. But if you look at the things that you just mentioned, look at them in a reverse standpoint. If your strength work is always smashing yourself, if your cardio is always zone four smashing yourself, if you're not sleeping enough, if you're going through a divorce or bankruptcy or hate your job, and now all of a sudden you're starving yourself, you see how this just accumulates very, very quickly? That's why I was teasing you earlier. It's so simple. I'm asking you to, to sleep eight hours. I know it's hard sometimes to make the time, but sleeping is not hard unless you can't sleep. Grazing every couple hours. Now, again, there are people out there that say that digestion is hard on the human system. That's why people are droggy and mentally foggy. I'm going to politely disagree. It's what you're eating that's making you be have a mental fog or sleepiness. If you eat fruits and vegetables and lean protein every couple hours without getting into a bunch of blood chemistry, your blood sugar is going to be stabilized because it's a low glycemic item. All of our listeners have heard that before because that segues us to your original question. What is the adrenal fatigues? Excuse me. What is the adrenal system? Well, if you think about our kidneys, we, we have these little triangular organs that are sitting on top of of your kidneys. And what they are is they're essentially part of your sympathetic system. Now, again, our listeners have heard it in a different context. Everybody's heard about fight or flight. So you know when you almost get into a car wreck and you hear the screeching tires, but you don't make metal to metal, or maybe you've been in the unfortunate situation where you have had a car wreck, 
you get that flushed feeling that comes over you immediately. That is your adrenal system dumping cortisol into your body as we just declared it as fight or flight. Is that the same yeah. thing, Coach Rob, like, like just your adrenaline, essentially? Like when you're on well, the starting gate or you're getting ready to swing the bat, like you get that rush of adrenaline, is that the same thing? You hit the nail on the head. What people don't realize is the adrenal system dumps adrenaline into the system and it actually drops in noradrenaline as well. Again, we won't get into blood chemistry and make our listeners fall asleep on boredom here, but understand that the adrenal system is very, very, um, its only role for the most part is to help you deal with stress. So if we go back to what we just said at the opening of the show tonight, think about the four quadrants of life that we had everybody write down, personal, professional, financial, and athletic. No matter where you're at in your personal life, you're thinking every single minute about one of those subjects every minute of every day that you're awake. You're either thinking about work, your family, your finances, or your health. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't consider yourself fit or athletic, you're still thinking about finances. You're still thinking about your job. You're still thinking about interpersonal relationships. See what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that you're thinking about all four of those, but Every minute of every day is going to fall into those four categories. When it comes to the adrenal system, remember when we had all of our listeners draw that teeter-totter and we said on one side is a box of stress and on the other side is food and sleep? Well, this adrenal system, when it's out of balance, insufficient sleep, insufficient food. Now, let me say insufficient. What we really mean is quality and quantity. But what if your stress box, remember at the end of the podcast, I said, look at the size of the box that you drew. And I said, what if the box of stress is 50% bigger than your recovery box on the other side? It's going to be out of weight, right? You're out of balance. Welcome to the world of adrenal fatigue. Because the adrenal system's only role is to help you deal with stress. Unfortunately, if your stress stress is nonstop and it's at high levels in all quadrants of life. If you, if anybody that's listening to this is into the mechanical side of the world, your automobile, your motorcycle, anything that's a machine has to be rebuilt. The difference is, is we tend to go off of an hour meter and we go, okay, there's a cadence of maintenance that we go off of, of with anything mechanical. As a human being, we don't have the ability to reach down our throats and replace an adrenal system, a respiratory system, We can't, yes, I was going to say we can't reach in and replace a tendon or ligament, but we can do surgery. But hypothetically speaking, you know, what we have to recognize is for us to adapt to stress in all quadrants is nothing more than a byproduct of finding where that the official physiological term is called homeostasis. At what point am I balancing stress to my ability to absorb it? And this is where we start to create a cascading of issues which we'll talk about here today, but I just want to make sure people understand the adrenal system is your ability to handle stress. The question is, where's the stress coming from? And a lot of times we have a tendency to contribute to it, like not eating enough, drinking, smoking, staying up late, not sleep. I mean, we, we tend to, as I teased you off the record, you know, we are supposedly the smartest species, but we do some really silly things to ourselves, knowing that it's hurting us, but we still continue to do it. Yeah. So how would, how would one measure that? I mean, how would one know where that balance is? I mean, what, what would be a good indication and, and how do you track it? I mean, that, that's, that seems like, uh, I, I guess you could do it with your, your Garmin heart rate monitor and things like that, but what are some other ways that, that we can recognize this? For those of you that have followed us for any period of time, even the first three shows that you and I've done together, we've talked a lot about the Garmin platform and In that platform, it does give you a lot of um, biofeedback metrics, resting heart rate, is it elevated, a stress score, they have an HRV evaluation, you can look at your sleep quality and quantity, you can look at your ratio, stuff that we've already spoken about. For everybody, with or without a Garmin platform, I want you to write down four specific things that you can do, or rather things that you can look for to see if you have adrenal fatigue. Number one would be night sweats. Number two would be low sex drive. Number three would be craving simple sugars. And number four would be tired, but not able to sleep. 
The problem, Dan, that we run into is if you look at those four situations and you could have one, you could have two, you could have all of them, you could have each one at a different level. The mainstream media, the mainstream Google, the mainstream so-called experts out there, they will make an excuse for all four of those situations. So if you're, if you have night sweats, you could be premenopausal. If you're craving simple sugars, you could be on your menstrual cycle. If you're tired and you can't sleep, it could be because you just have a lot on your mind. If you have a low sex drive, it could be because you're not 20 anymore. I don't care if you're 20. I don't care if you're 40. I've got a 62 year old client that just got a new, his new wife pregnant. Okay. So what, when I hear something like that, I, I smile from ear, ear to ear because I, I, this is going to come across wrong. He got her pregnant at 62 years old. So don't tell me it's not possible to do it. When I see athletes that are sleeping, when I see individuals that have struck that finite balance, I've got clients that are above 50 years old who do not have adrenal fatigue. They're not on testosterone. They're not on topical creams. They're not on, on supplements. They don't need to take the purple pill to be sexually active. They, they sleep through the night perfectly fine, meaning a lot of people say, well, I get up a lot because I have to urinate. So I'm just getting old. No, maybe you're just drinking too much fluid before you go to bed for the last hour or two. But, and I say this respectfully to everybody listening, we have this little negative canary on our shoulder and, and people have heard me on podcasts. I always say, let's knock this canary off. Let's shoot it. Let's annihilate it. Let's obliterate it because we get somewhat mind warped. We start believing everything that we see and read. Oh, you can't get an erection because you're not 20. Oh, you have night sweats. You're premenopausal. You, you can't sleep through the night. You know, wait, 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 wait. Why are you not able to sleep through the night? Dan, we, on the last program that, or the last podcast we did together, the funnel that we illustrated, do you remember the funnel we said was your adrenal system? Yeah. If we step back and we talk and we go back and we look at that funnel, I just for those who may have not listened to the last podcast or had a chance to watch it on YouTube, I want you to look at your, or think, think about rather your adrenal system as a funnel. So at the bottom of the funnel, when you go to bed, HGH, human growth hormone and testosterone should be released through your adrenal system at night. What feeds that adrenal system is high quality fats. And Dan, you'd asked a really good question. What is an MCT fat? That'd be raw, raw nuts. That would be coconut, extra virgin olive oil, cold water fish like salmon and sardines. Anything, and you guys can Google an entire laundry list, avocados, the list goes on and on. But in the context of what we're talking about today, and, and Dan, I loved your question. Well, what would I look for to know if I have adrenal fatigue, whether it's a smidgen or, you know, overwhelming? Look at those four, night sweats, inability to sleep through the night, craving simple sugars, low sex drive. If you have any of those symptoms, you need to eat more fat to feed the adrenals to satisfy adrenal fatigue. Yeah, but Rob, that, that's not what all the pharmaceutical companies tell you on TV with all their commercials. Uh, I literally was watching TV the other night and every other commercial was a pill to solve an issue that, yeah. you know, erectile dysfunction, um, you name it, they have Sleepy. a pill for it. Yep. Yeah, and it's like, we need to go back to Billy Basics and that is what we're eating. I mean, think about this, right? Yes, uh, medicine is advanced, right? We, we all agree sure. that for good or bad, it's advanced. Mm -hmm. But 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, we didn't have all this, right? We had to rely on something and that was the basic things. And yeah. I, th I think you'll agree with me, Rob, maybe not, maybe I'm way out in left field, but it seems to me that people back in the 50s, 60s, 40, you know, back in the day, we're healthier individuals than they are now. 100%. And you bring up a good point. What did we do 60 years ago? We farmed, you know, we grew our own food. And yes, like you say, we're in, we're in the time that we're in and, and things are dramatically different, but your point's still well taken. What I find interesting is if we go back to our great grandparents, what did they live on? You know, they lived on the, the animals on the farm, they, they cooked in the pork fat, they ate the bacon, they ate the red meat. They also ate a lot of fruits and vegetables that they cultivated out of their own dirt. 
And when you go in, you and I can do an entire show on some of these TV programs that are out there that are like, you've got a, a certain group that's trying to villainize and say, you got to go strict vegan and here's everything against meat products. And then you have the meat people of all different types of meats going against the vegan. And really, as the old saying goes, just follow the money, right? These shows are being funded and underwritten by people who have an agenda to push, look a little bit deeper. But if we go back to what you just said, and I never really thought about it that way, and you bring it up in a, a very good light, if you go back 60 years ago, our grandparents lived to be quite old, eating fruits, vegetables, and lean protein. And we could even go so far as to say they didn't even eat lean protein because they cooked in lard and they ate, you know, I go back and you think your great grandmother and they were canning their own stuff and, but they lived a very long life and they were super strong and they were very rarely ill and they didn't go to the hospital very much. And the list goes on and on. Here's where I personally believe, and I, I kind of teased about that little yellow canary on your shoulder. In defense of all of our listeners, I think there's just a plethora of misinformation and too many agendas. Um, some people may have heard me say this before, and if it's repetitive, I apologize, but I always follow the KISS program, keep it simple, but sustainable. And when you walk into the, if you walk into the grocery store, and we talked about this, and you shop the perimeter, you've got everything that you need. Eat it every couple hours, you're going to be pretty much Johnny on the spot. But here's the problem that you run into. When you walk into the store and you shop the perimeter, you're going to get everything that's considered. And again, let's hit the pause button for a moment. I understand if the typical grocery store, the vegetables are gassed and they're, they're waxed and all. I understand that. But I mean, again, I don't have time to grow the food in my backyard. So I have to, I have to choose my battles here. Um, Cause again, I don't want to come across and, and sound like, I'm not aware that there's waxes on our vegetables and there's bovine hormones in the animals that we eat. I get it. But if you can get organic or you can get free range and you can get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner, that's awesome. Yes, I'd encourage you to do it. But if you can't, find yourself a happy medium and kind of take your foot off your own, own throat because there's so much misinformation out there. I'll give you an example. I hate to show my age here. But this is my 38th year of being a human performance specialist. So if I look at diets, quote unquote diets, books that have been sold, cans to drink, bars to buy, bags, boxes of things to consume, prepaid, prepared meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I've been through Weight Watchers. I've been through Jenny Craig. I've been through Zone. I've been through Atkins. I've been through South Beach. Now going through keto. That's just on the diet side of things. We're going to talk about building a, a training program that makes sense. Think about the physical side of it. I've gone through super setting. I've gone through super slow. I've gone through the Tabata. I've gone to, what does it all come back full circle to? Get away from somebody trying to sell you a box, a bag, a bar, a book, and come back to the fundamentals. Walk in the grocery store, shop the perimeter, graze every couple hours, sleep eight hours a night, reduce stress, and then we get into the subject of adrenal fatigue. If you have the one of those four or a combination of those four, you're starting to smoke yourself. And, and there might That's be listeners and, and viewers right now that are like, man, they already talked about this. But really, that's the basic things that, that everybody needs to truly understand before we can get into the next thing, right? I mean, you're exactly right. So the more and more that we can encourage these, these best practices and, and finding what's best for you, for what you eat and your sleep and all that. Um, you have to master that before we go on to the next step. Well, and, and if somebody's new to this podcast with you and I, I own a supplement company, but I don't think supplements are necessary until we validate that they're necessary. I own a sports drink company because I started a sports drink and a recovery drink only because I couldn't find anything clean enough to suggest it to my clients in good faith. That doesn't make me a superhero. I just, I'm the Garmin heart rate I only encourage it because it's very easy for the end user. We have enough and a ton of resources out there to help the listeners interpret their data. You know, and that's the thing that I want people to take away. Again, I'm not a superhero, but ironically, as I've teased, if I come out with a program that says don't breathe air, don't eat food, don't sleep, and just smash yourself in the exercise world, it would probably be very successful, as awkward as that sounds. Because right now you have people saying, 
HIT training, high, inten high intensity interval training, and then they'll sell you all these ideologies associated with it. And as we've discussed, in a clinical setting, yes, the textbook theory works. On somebody that's already stressed, it's not going to be advantageous. And you got people that say, oh, you got to go paleo or you got to go keto. We've talked about the human body will adapt if you decide to, you know, strip it of something. It will adapt until it can't anymore. And if you were on this side of the desk and you were listening and seeing how many people walk into our office, and they, what do they tell you? I've just been the last year I've been doing keto or I've been doing, um, I've been doing HIIT training or a combination of the two. And they've got hair falling out, all kinds of sexual dysfunction. They're on, a, on the brink of depression. And we'll talk about some of this stuff here because really what they're running into when they come in and they've got hair falling out and sexual dysfunction, depression, suppressed appetite, not to mention some of the health ramifications, segues us right back to the subject of adrenal fatigue. So you bring up a good point. If you have followed us for any period of time, does it sound repetitive? Yes. Why? Because it's the foundation of where things start to go awry. I have a question I've been meaning to ask you this. I meant to ask you this on the last uh, pod that we did together, sure. but um, I, I know that you're a very big proponent of Garmin heart rate or uh, watches with the heart rate monitor and, and things like that. I know Garmin is the benchmark um, for tracking this kind of data. Yeah. A lot of our listeners and viewers may not have a Garmin. They may have a Polar watch or an Apple watch or something like that. Not everybody can run out and spend the money on the Garmin. Is there tools within those those watches and devices that they could still look at? I mean, they're they're not irrelevant, right? No, they're not irrelevant at all. As I always say, uh, you remember when we, you and I were kids, you had the Suzanne Summers Thigh Master, you, know, you just sat yeah. and squeezed that device. Then you have the Body by Jake. I, I always tease with new clients. I don't care what you own. We're going to use what you have. We're always going to start with that first. Um, if you don't have a heart rate monitor at all, you know, the old good old two fingers on your wrist or on the side of your neck, you can get your heart rate to see if you're stressed or not. Um, but now you bring up a very good point. I would rather you have something than nothing uh, just because it helps we go back to confidence again. It, that's why I love that we get a chance to do these pods together because I want to encourage people with the real knowledge, cut through the quagmire of misinformation that's out there. So we, we say this quite often. When you step on a scale, a, a weight scale, does it really matter if it's 100% accurate? It does not because if you use it every day, the margin of error factors itself out. So if you step on the scale, you're actually 170 pounds and it says you're 175, it doesn't matter. It's always off by five pounds. It's when that morning weight, when you weigh in and you weigh 170 every morning for the most part, and you get on it tomorrow and you're 179, there's a problem. That's inflammation and swelling. Is that from food or exercise? But if you have a, a Polar, a Whoop, um, like you say, Fitbit, Apple Watch, whatever, just learn how to interpret the data. But again, just what's been based on my experience is People will spend the money on these other items and the data is not even available. Calorie burn. Stress score, sleep information, don't know what to buy. Garmin's going to give you both the upfront exercise as well as the recovery. And then it lets you look at the recovery metrics like stress, HRV, and stuff like that. So it's a really good point. Use what you have absolutely for sure more than anything else. Cool. So uh, I apologize if we derailed that, but I, I've been no. meaning to ask you that. And I, because uh, yeah. I, I know a lot of, we talk about the Garmin and somebody's probably looking down at their Apple watch, like, well, hell, I, I don't even have the right equipment, but you yeah. do have something. But we don't want that. Make sure start. you, okay, cool. Yeah. Start with what you've got hundred percent. Great point. And I'm glad you brought that up because I don't want to discourage people. You know, you and I don't live in a glass house. We live on budgets, you know, and um, if, if you guys know, this is a Phoenix 5. Of course, my wife has a Phoenix 6. Uh, <laughs> that's just the way it goes, whether that's considered a hand-me-down or whatever. No, in all seriousness, I'm not going to go out and just buy another watch just because a new version has come out. Um, I do always invest in the new version because I want to know how it works in case somebody calls me and says, how do you set it up? I always make sure that my wife or my children have the better units. Again, I'm not a superhero. I just need to know the knowledge I want to make sure that the end users are getting the most out of their watch. So we know what the adrenal system is. Yep. We know what adrenal fatigue is now. We know what the signs of adrenal fatigue are. That's the night sweats, the low sex drive, um, 
it's craving simple sugars. Yeah, and the and not able one, to sleep through that night. Not yep. sleeping through the night. There's more to adrenal fatigue, and that is athletic adrenal fatigue. Can you explain what that yeah. is? This is a very, very frustrating subject for everybody who's listening and considers themselves an athlete. And here's why. What Dan, when you and I are out riding, right? We're at Zeb's track. We're riding. For those of though, for those of you who may not know us, Dan and I, um, we do a lot of motorcycle riding together. So Dan, imagine that we're out at Zeb's track and we're riding and you just aren't feeling it today. You know, you and I are out there. We're supposed to be doing some speed work. We're getting ready for world vets. And you're like, man, it is, I've got a month. I have got to get my butt in shape. I mean, let me rephrase that. You're in shape, right? You've been working out for six months, everything. And you're out at the track and you just aren't, you want to hit a two, two minute lap time. And you're like 204, 204, 203, 20. You're like, what in the heck is going on? So what does the hyper competitive person do when their body is not performing the way they want it to? Do they pump the brakes or do they smash the hammer? Usually smash the hammer because they think that's that they're, it, right? they're behind, right? That's exactly right. And that's why I say this is such a tumultuous conversation for elite athletes, because the number one thing that happens is what they normally can put out athletically actually is below, we would consider it subpar. And then when you get an athlete that sees those types of info, that type of information, they lean in on it. They don't, it doesn't cross a competitive person's mind to go, Hey, because again, we get back to that canary that we grew up with. Ah, oh, pain is weakness leaving the body. No pain, no gain. Sleep is what you do when you die, right? But we've come so far with physiology now, and that's why I'm so thankful for the YouTube, uh, these different platforms where we can get the information out there and cut through the misinformation that's so readily available that's pushed by agendas. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this here in a moment, but, you know, I get kind of a bad rap because people say, well, Rob doesn't, doesn't push his athletes. If you make that comment, you've never been one of my athletes. I can promise you that because my clients will tell you on a weekly basis and on a six or an eight week training block, they get pushed, but we only push when we validate the body's ready for it. So when the very first thing we look at, and when we look at the athletic side, there's more than a dozen of these. The first one is your athletic performance starts to fall off. And so what do you do? You throw more effort at it. And instead of it going better, it goes actually worse. Why? Just like anything that's mechanical, if it's already tired and you try to get more out of it, you're not going to squeeze more out of something that's mechanically tired. And I'm hoping that's really starting to resonate with our listeners. Ask yourself, if your car, if your truck, if your motorcycle, your boat, your snowmobile, your jet ski, whatever you enjoy that's motor driven, when it starts showing sign of fatigue, do you just yell at it and call it names and tell it to push through the fatigue or the wear and tear? As absurd as that is, that's what you're doing to your body. Now, uh, again, we good, can get uh, into some big psychology about tapping out early, but go ahead, Dan. A good a picture to paint of that, right, is, is you're driving down the road in your car and all of a sudden you see your temperature gauge, you know, climbing, climbing. What do you do? You're, you don't keep putting your foot to the floor, right? You start backing right. off the throttle, see if you can get that thing to cool down thing still climbs, climbs, and climbs. What do you eventually have to do? You got to pull over, right? You or what happens still. if you don't? What happens if you don't? Catastrophic engine fail. That's exactly it. And then you're kicking yourself in the bum because you didn't drive to the gauges. That's why I think it's so funny because there's these so-called fitness experts out there that say, don't train a race with a heart rate monitor because it doesn't factor in all the influencing of heat and humidity. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But I'm going to bypass that bunny trail for just a moment here. You mentioned something I think is pretty interesting, and I want our listeners to pay attention to it. Dan, if you and I are out on a bicycle ride, and we know that we can ride at 15 miles an hour at a heart rate of 130, when you have uh, any kind of ad adrenal fatigue type issues, your heart rate, you're just talking about your, your gauges are starting to redline here, and, and you just kind of throw a no regard to it whatsoever. Same thing happens here. You will find that your heart rate will be elevated beyond what it should be based on your knowledge that I can ride my bicycle. I've ridden this road. You and I've ridden it a hundred times together. We know we can ride for 40 miles, 15 miles an hour, heart rates, 130, 132 all day long. And you and I are riding today, or maybe not just like Monday to Tuesday, but all of a sudden over the course of a couple months, you start noticing that the heart rate's going up, even though the speed's not, the average heart rate is going up. That's adrenal fatigue. Now, I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence, but think about this. If my heart rate is artificially elevated, 
what does that do to my sweat rate? It increases it. What happens when I get de when I when I sweat too much, and then I become dehydrated? Someone who has chronic fatigue will complain of a lot of headaches. Again, I've listened to our listeners. I know what you guys are going through. My goal after today is that you guys can go. I'm not being soft. I've got a freaking headache because, and you start reverse engineering it. What is used to be an easy workout is now hard. I'm craving simple sugars. I'm not able to eat. See the, see the cross termination between you can't sleep and then you're like, but I've got world vets. I got to get out there and go train. Well, you're running on six hours of sleep. Well, it's because you don't have enough time. So you don't sleep and you drive the adrenals. They're redlining. They're just constantly redlining every minute that you're awake. Now, when we get to this point of adrenal fatigue, this could be whether it's athletic or whether it's just general fitness, you're irritable. You find yourself being sappy. I'm going to use the word depressed, not in a loose way. As I say in every show, I do not take depression lightly. But you find yourself being sappy. You find yourself being a little bit more melancholy. Good sign of adrenal fatigue. Um, when we start looking at the you're exercising, but all of a sudden you find that your appetite is suppressed more than usual. One of the things that we want the listeners to understand is when you take the heart rate too high, too long, and you put it in an extremely stressful situation like competition, it will always suppress your appetite. You go, well, that's just competition, isn't it? Great comment. Problem is, is what happens when your workouts are perceived as a stressful situation. Now you keep suppressing the appetite. We come back to the illustration of the funnel. You have no appetite. You know you should eat high quality fats, but what? If you eat anything, you're probably going to regurgitate it. Do you see this? You see this vicious cycle that just becomes a snowball that starts to get in just out of control. You're having night sweats. You're having the craving for simple sugars because the adrenals are overworked. The adrenals are overworked because you're getting less and less athletic output. So you keep pushing and leaning in harder and you just start causing a cascading of issues. Then when I'm depressed, when I'm sappy, when I'm irritable, I just chalk it up that this is my new norm. And Dan, I want, you and I have talked about this off the air. Every listener, stop and think about what you get done on a daily basis. And if you're over 25, 30 years old, I want you to imagine what you do on a daily basis. Let's go get somebody fresh out of college, and I want you to drop them right into your job. And I want to see how they do. Family, job, travel, training, bills, mechanical work. If you're whatever your athletic sport is, right? For our triathletes, they got to drive to and from the pool. They got all kinds of laundry because they're doing sometimes two, three workouts a day. They got bike maintenance. They've got shoes they got to repair. They got to get heart rate monitors. They got to have they got to have their energy fuel. Or is the energy fuel cold? Do they have enough for the run that they're going to do? That is become your new norm. And I say this very respectfully. We become desensitized to our norm of literally wide open. And we go, well, how did I get into adrenal fatigue? You moms that are out there, think about this. You have children. You, the, your partner is another child. That, that partner is always begging you for, you know, fun things as adults that go along. They I feel like you're talking about me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why I hope this, the listeners have a huge smile on their face because we get it, man. We get it. But it's always amazing when we get somebody that goes on vacation and they literally get off this hamster wheel and they realize, my goodness, when we were uh, in France this year, we were talking to a police officer and it was a young gentleman, ironically, and he'd been in the military and he'd been around the world. And I just said to him, I said, if you were to mentor a young individual, what would your advice be to him? And he, it was such a cool response. He goes, as Americans, you guys live to work, but everyone in the world works to live. And I thought, man, what a profound comment. And this is a gentleman, while we were in France, he speaks seven languages fluently. He's a police officer. He's already been in the military. And what an incredible perception because we come over here and we find ourselves on a hamster wheel. And then we wonder why we start having adrenal fatigue issues. And then we get that little negative canary that tells us that we're not diligent. And we're not committed to success and we want to tap out early and then the name calling comes whether it's from somebody you're training with or maybe somebody in our own little head a dad an ex-coach an ex-partner we all have them right and and i want to say this very very respectfully 
Dan, if you and I were growing up and we had just this real rogue football coach, and I'm, I'm not a snowflake. I, I just hope that the listeners will stick with us for a moment. You and I have a wooden fence in the backyard. And every time we get a comment, you're fat, you don't have what it takes, suck it up, buttercup, whatever. You just go out and you smash a nail into that wood. And then eventually we get enough energy. We go out and we grab a hammer and we pull that nail out. Well, yeah, the nail's out of the wood, but the the hole is still there. Now, again, I'm not a pansy. I've got thick skin. I love to train as hard as the next guy. I love competition, love training in a group. I like to, I like, I like to be the best. So I don't like to lose. It's that old saying, I, I, I hate to lose more than I enjoy winning. That's just my MO. So I empathize with the listeners, but here's the thing. We can't dismiss when somebody has said something. It could have been hurtful, like your a parent may have said something. And that's a part of that canary that's got a conversation in your head. And then we didn't, you know, we didn't succeed. We didn't make the all-American college team. We didn't make the Olympics. We did whatever, whatever level of capability you got to. Maybe for those that are are moto fans, maybe you were killer on the 85, 125 and go to B class and you kind of fizzled a little bit. Maybe you went down the wrong trail chasing. Girls, drugs, big trucks, sound systems. And then you came back five, six years later with, with a lot of regret, right? Well, that contributes to that little canary that's on your shoulder. But then we get into this idea that, all right, I'm, I'm going to recommit myself. I spent six years. And how many, day, Dan, how many times have you and I heard this? Well, I kind of went down the wrong bunny trail for five or six years, but I'm going to, I'm coming back. Yep. I'm coming all back. All the time. All the time. The problem is six years later, you started a family, you started a company, you're going to school, you're trying to kind of clean up some of your bad credit that you screwed up because you overextended yourself, put on 30 pounds, maybe picked up a couple of bad habits. There's a lot of rocks in your backpack that you're trying to fix all at the same time, but you're on a comeback. You see where adrenal fatigue just inevitably becomes part of the, the, the narrative, not in a negative way, just because we're human and we're hyper competitive. Well, no, the other thing that I, I noticed as I get a little bit older too, you know, cause I've, I've done that, right. I've, I've, I've gone, gotten in shape, got fat, got in shape, but as you do it, right. It gets harder and harder because your body changes. The, the things that you require are different than it was before. So yeah. it, it, it is definitely tougher. And I, I guess you have to make yourself aware of those changes and be able to adapt to them and, and, and correct them. You bring up something that's um, worth bringing up at this point that I didn't even think about. No matter where the listeners are at, everybody is going to nod their head and agree with this. If you weren't injured along your athletic career, how much more success would you have had? And people go, yeah, I get that. Okay. Well, if you look at what we just talked about, the signs of adrenal fatigue that are athletically related, how often do we actually honor the fact that we're hungry, irritable, We're not performing athletically the way we know we should. Now, all we have to do is step back and look at our calorie burn rate versus what we're taking in. On the Garmin platform, they have a calorie burn, both in rest and as active. If you import, which Garmin does a great job, if you import MyFitnessPal, you literally can see what you've consumed against what you've burned. You bridge the gap. So the adrenal fatigue is a byproduct of excessive amounts of stress, but for our listeners athletically driven, you don't realize some, some so-called expert told you to run around calorically restricted. You just drove the stress level up. You didn't pay attention to hydration because maybe nobody told you the importance of it. So you're running around chronically dehydration. Stress level goes up. Well, what is a byproduct of stress? There's a hormone known as cortisol. Cortisol is, is kind of, it gets, it gets confused. The, the subject of cortisol gets confused. Let me give, Dan, if I lose you, or if you think I've lost the listeners, please bring me back. Yep. Cortisol does have a healthy component to it. So for anybody that's had their cortisol tested, it's associated with your circadian rhythm. So you'll notice if we take a blood serum level, at the end of the day, your cortisol should be at its lowest level. And that's why you're tired and you can fall asleep. As you go through the night, you give your body enough sleep it actually cortisol levels rise and it becomes an arousal hormone. So if you take your cortisol, if you do a, a, do a saliva test in the morning, cortisol should be at its highest level. So cortisol has a positive role in our human body. It's kind of like electrolytes. Electrolytes, people think 
is just about absorbing fluid. You are correct, but electrolytes play a significant role in muscle contraction. Cortisol plays a role on waking you up from deep sleep, naturally raises, rises in your bloodstream and you wake up without an alarm. Cortisol, when we're talking about fight or flight, is remember how we opened up tonight's conversation? You almost get in a car wreck and you get that flushed feeling. That's cortisol, which is a byproduct of the sympathetic system that says, oh, we almost got in a car accident. That is considered stressful on the system. Most people don't realize the significance of what they just said. If you almost fell off a cliff and died, people go, oh, that almost died. We don't always recognize being dehydrated has the same, I'm not putting it on the same scale. You can survive going a day without food. I'm not saying I wish sometimes it was so mechanically absolute. You run out of gas in your vehicle, you're parked on the side of the road, right? We don't let it happen yeah. because we understand that's not a good situation. What people underestimate is when you're in a bad relationship, you're in a bad job, when you're drinking and smoking, you're not sleeping enough, the, the dripping of the cortisol hormone, it's almost like a fuel injector. It's just constantly firing into the bloodstream. And what I want the listeners to understand is when you start putting on that belly fat, that's a direct, that is a clear indicator of cortisol. So the listeners need to realize that cortisol, when it becomes in a stressful environment, is a fat magnet. Now, Dan, you and I are all about accountability and responsibility, but I want the, the listeners to take a deep breath and put a smile on their face. If you're in a bad relationship, a bad job, financially upside down, and you're smashing yourself in the gym, you're going to find yourself craving junk food. This gets into a lot of deep blood chemistry, but at a 10,000 foot level, when cortisol levels are dripping into the blood over and over and over again, think about, again, a fuel injector just firing 12, 15 hours a day, you're going to start craving junk food because what cortisol does is it messes with the insulin that's produced from your pancreas. Again, a lot of chemistry. I want the listeners at a 10,000 foot view. You may find yourself binging on a bag of junk food. You might find yourself craving some McDonald's French fries. I'm not justifying it, but I do want you to understand, Dan, again, I apologize. We got to go a little technical yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. The only role that hormones have in the human body is to communicate. Again, you don't have to have a PhD in, in science to have an understanding of that. The idea is if your body is under a lot of stress, you're going to find yourself craving simple sugars, white starches, and junk food because the cortisol is influencing the pancreas' production of insulin, and you're going to find yourself wanting to binge on stuff that you don't normally do. Remember how we said very, very respectfully, you might find yourself irritable or even sappy? You don't choose to do that, right? It's because the hormones are out of whack. It's very important. I, 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 like I said it earlier and I'll reiterate it. I am not taking depression lightly at all. That is hormonally related. Night sweats, it's hormonally related. The role of hormones in the body is just to communicate. Things are working or they're not working. Well, you almost get in an accident. The hormone cortisol is a byproduct of that sympathetic system saying, oh, we almost got in an accident. So it just starts firing this chemical. And next thing you know, you find yourself craving simple sugars. Do you see how this comes full circle all of a sudden? Yep. But you're not going to get people that will explain it. I'm, again, I'm not saying I'm super smart. People won't explain why do you out of nowhere feel like you just want to go down to McDonald's and supersize a set of fries. There's a difference between enjoying a McDonald's fry. That's being, I love them. Okay. But I know that they don't cooperate with me and I know they're not healthy. So I haven't had McDonald's fries in probably 25 years. But I would be lying if I said I don't enjoy them. The difference is when you wake up tomorrow and like you're going to hurt somebody if you don't get them. We've all had those situations. Go back to the funnel. The body's external sign is adrenal, excuse me. This external sign of adrenal fatigue is night sweats, craving simple sugars, low sex drive, and not able to sleep. Those are external symptoms. The correction is high quality fats and sleep. You said okay. it at the beginning of tonight. We're going to go back to what we talked about in the last podcast. There you have it. Simple. So we've talked about, uh, we know what adrenal system is. We know what the adrenal fatigue is. We now know the athletic signs of adrenal fatigue. We know some ways to offset the adrenal fatigue. That's maintaining proper hydration levels. 
Uh, that's half of your body weight in water a day is we would consider proper, correct? Very, very close. Well, because we do have some Europeans, you need to convert your body weight to pounds because I apologize, I haven't mes memorized oh. the kilo conversion. Um, you want to take your body weight in pounds, divide it by two, and that's how many ounces you want to consume over a 10 hour period. So you have to make sure you convert pounds to ounces. I apologize for our European no, listeners. I'm glad, I'm glad you put that in there because I, I tend to forget. I've, that's I, okay. I, it's a lot I think that it. we're all on ounces and pounds, but I forget we're not. That's um, okay. <laughs> a food, quality and quantity, sleep, same thing, quality and quantity, exercise, the intensity level, the duration, how frequently you're exercising, and the critical speed and threshold of fatigue. Now that we know all that, Coach Rob, I, I, we're running low on time, but I, I want to get into this because this is the, the main piece of this is how do we optimize our training schedule, knowing what we know now to handle this, this adrenal fatigue? It's, it's a brilliant question. And if, if, if the listeners have been with us the last four podcasts together, you have all the information to answer that question yourself. And here's why. The definition of overtraining is doing more than you can absorb. We've said it in all four shows together. So instead of me sending you a bunch of menus and saying, eat this, simply look at your calorie burn rate, walk in the store, you combine the foods in a way that makes up what that calorie burn rate is. When we look at exercise, you have to re remember we talked about this in the last pod together. I can't tell you that you need to do four hours of cardio and three hours of strength training. What you need to do is look in your daily schedule. How much time do you have and fill it accordingly? When you say, Rob, I've got 21 minutes on Monday and I have 47 minutes on Tuesday and I have 60 minutes on Wednesday, make those workouts low stress. If you, if you look at everything we've talked about for the last four shows, everything is about managing stress. It's not about just smashing yourself. Can you give an Once example you, of just a, a low intensity workout? Just a few examples. Yeah, go for Somebody a walk. Might, okay. Yeah, go for a walk. Uh, people don't realize you use more muscle walk, more muscles walking than you do running because you don't have that forward momentum. Um, go walk for 30 minutes. You'll be surprised. You'll feel it. You'll feel it in your calves and your inner thighs, your adductors, and go for a swim. Uh, if you ride moto, go, go do a turn track. Um, if you like to road cycle, go and ride. The key is you've got to be able to measure um, for those that don't have a heart rate monitor of any sort. If you can't sing and talk to yourself or talk to somebody with you, you're going too hard. That's the talk, talk test. I don't care if you're on an elliptical, concept two rower, bicycle, gravel bike, swimming, running, with skateboarding. I don't care. Unicycle, whatever you like to do. If you can't sing to yourself, it's too hard. Now, people go, Rob, that's ridiculous. I've got world vets. I've got Ironman world championships. That's a different story. Because I will never, ever allow, an, or I shouldn't say allow, I don't allow people to do things. I would never encourage people to do high intensity interval training until I can validate that they've got the foundation. And the foundation is all about managing stress. Literally, Dan, what we've done is we've come back full circle over four shows. Because if I say, please do four one hour blocks a week and you go, Rob, I've only got 21 minutes, 47 minutes and 51. That's how much time you're going to do a week. Not what I say you should do. You see the difference? Yeah. That's why I get so irritated by so-called trainers, whether they're in a gym or whether they're online. Don't tell me to do four hours of cardio a week when I, for the entire week, I've got 57 minutes. Do what you have available to you. And when you do it, make sure it's low stress. Now, if you start seeing your adrenal fatigue symptoms go away, you know you're on track. Keep going until you don't have any symptoms. Remember we were saying we become desensitized? Yeah. And that's what I want to leave the listeners with. Yes, I could. I can put together training programs and, and I don't want anybody to be overwhelmed. But when I'm putting together a training program, I'm balancing volume and that volume is broken down into what percentage is aerobic and anaerobic. I'm balancing what the fatigue levels are, residual fatigue. I'm working on the rest, work, work, rest ratios. I'm adjusting nutrition based on demand, more protein, less protein, more carbs. Now we're into the science of performance. But guess what? 
if somebody comes in and they're not sleeping and they're not eating and they've got all these signs of adrenal fatigue, we always start there. Yeah. That's the only place. And that's what I want to leave the, the listeners with is get to a point where you actually leave a workout and go, that was actually pretty enjoyable. It was almost, here's the, oh gosh, Dan, that was easy. Yeah. Taboo. Well, I want to take you just one step further before we depart here. And yes, sir. I, I think that there's a lot of people like this, myself, including I I've come to you with this. This is we all, you talk about time, right? And, and coach Rob, I, you're, the listeners probably don't know this of you, but you are very, very regimen. You know what you're doing today at two o'clock. You know what you're doing at four o'clock. You're very regimen. Most people are not like that. Um, so you talk about do what you have time for. I think that the majority of us have plenty of time. It's, mm -hmm. it is refocusing that time instead of playing on your phone on Instagram to doing something right. Yeah. Say somebody has plenty of time. Cause I, I truly believe we can all find time to do this. Basic Billy basics for someone that's net that, that is listening to the show and says, you know what? I want to start doing something tomorrow morning. What do you suggest? Is it, is it, is it a, a 10 minute cardio, 20 minute weight lift, just simple, basic, give me a, a, a simple training schedule to start tomorrow. Yeah. Um, when you get home from work, leave your office with some walking shoes on. And when you get home, uh, let everybody in the house know that you're going to walk down the street five minutes and then come back, walk down the street five minutes and come back. And at the top of every minute, just do some walking lunges. If people aren't sure what, what those are, look those up on the internet. There's tons of them on YouTube. You're just going to essentially do a nice, slow, don't go crazy. Don't pile drive your knee into the ground. And then when you get five minutes out, I know you're going to feel kind of goofy. Go over to a wall and do some push-ups against the wall. If you're strong enough and you can do it safely, go somewhere. Where, drop and go five, 10, 15 push-ups, whatever you can do. Rest a minute. Do another four, five, 10, 20 push-ups, whatever. Walk. Come back every one minute, do a walking lunge. Here's why. When you do a push-up, when you get into that position on the ground, you're engaging all of your chest muscles, believe it or not. When you start to go down, you work your front of your shoulder, your deltoids, the back of your arms, your triceps. You're working muscles called teres minor and major. For you to sit in a plank position, you're working the muscles in your back, your hip flexors. Lots of science, right? But listen, the reason why I wanted to mention all the muscles is people think, well, a push-up doesn't really help. Sure it does. And if you do that three days a week, do the math. Five minutes out, five minutes back, three times a week, you've got 30 minutes under your belt. If you did 10 push-ups, now you've got another 30 push-ups on top of that. Engaging all of those muscles. When you do a walking lunge, the reason why we want to do it, not boring the listeners, we want to open up the hip flexors. We all sit in a chair, right? So our hips are like this. Here's our torso. Here's our quads. So now the hip flexors, the muscles. That's why when we go to stand up, it's so hard to get our straight up and down. We all look like hunchback in Notre Dame. Yep. That's why. That's why I want to do a walking lunge. But when you simply walk, you're engaging all the muscles in your feet, the calf muscles, your shin muscles, your quads, your hamstrings, your bum, all the deep lateral rotators, just simply by walking. Do that three days a week. And then we have what's called a three, two, one test. Now this is a little bit big, but it's a fun one to think about. If you can find three days in a row, this is a, this is a tough one. The very first day walk for three hours. Second day walk for two hours. And the third day walk for one hour. And it gets and, into a lot of science, but it and, will. And you're talking consecutive hour, like three hours consecutive. Uh, so or on, can so you break on that Friday, up? Friday, you walk three hours, Saturday, you walk two hours and Sunday, you walk one hour. Okay. So Friday, I could like walk an hour in the morning, an hour for lunch and an hour at night. So three hours nope. total. Three it's hours second. to get three, okay, three gotcha. hour block. And that's why I'm saying it's big. Now, if you have no fitness background, do an hour on day one, do 40 minutes on day two and do 20 minutes on day three. What you're doing is you're completely resetting your body's metabolism. That's why the, the longer you go, the more of a reset. If you've ever gone hiking, you know, you can really feel it when you're done. But the point being is, as and I love how you bring it up. People think oh, I got to go buy a gym membership or I got to build a, a gym in my garage. No, do body push-ups, do sit-ups on a football, preferably um, walking lunges, open up the pelvis, push-ups against the wall. Because remember, I'm showing you a push-up on the ground with your arms this way. 
it's the same thing. If I go against the wall, I just don't have as much load. I get the exact same engagement of muscles. So if you're a little bit overweight and you can't get up and down, that's cool. There's nothing wrong. Your muscles don't care if you're horizontal or vertical, just engage them. So there we go, folks. You guys, you guys have some basic, basic workouts to start with. You got your basic duration. Perfect. Um, there you go. I want to thank the listeners. I want to thank all the viewers on YouTube. If you guys are on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe to our channel. Make sure you like and share. That definitely helps us out. Um, thank you guys all for supporting the Coach Rob podcast, Coach Rob Performance Podcast, everything that we do. We greatly appreciate it. Coach Rob, thank you. Thank you, brother. And you, are, you are the man. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for supporting the show. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Be safe.